Alrighty, and just like that, another MLS season is in the books. Now, for the second year in a row, we saw an MLS Cup finish with the scoreline 2-1. And really, for the second year in a row, we see the home team take a 2-0 lead and was able to hold on to a 2-1 victory. Though, early on, what's kind of interesting about this game compared to what we saw last year is that the Galaxy was absolutely flying early on. It looked like this was going to get... Get ugly with the way that the Galaxy scored two goals in the first 14 minutes. The Red Bulls were completely rattled in this game. But to give the Red Bulls credit, they did fought hard. Obviously, uh, scoring on their fir first chance of the game definitely helped change the momentum. But one of the biggest issues uh, I mentioned about the Red Bulls, and, you know, there this is not really an issue, at least in the postseason, but this was a major issue in the second half of the season. And that, of course, is finishing chances. They they had had problems at times finishing ch chances. And that in this game, it kind of shown up once again where, you know, they had their moments in this game to tie this game up at, at two apiece. I mean, to be fair, the Galaxy themselves had their chances to get that third goal. But the Galaxy was letting the Red Bulls to try to, to get this equalizer. Like, they were letting them hang, hang around to try to get the equalizer and... Overall, you know, it, again, you know, I, I don't know, you could call this a that's so metro moment, Consider the Red Bulls never had a lead in this game, and, you know, you couldn't really say there was really a lot of big heartbreaking moment that happened in this, but it's just another uh, layer of, uh, of just kind of added fertility for this Red Bulls team that still have yet to climb over the mountain in terms of winning their first ever MLS Cup. Now, in the first half, uh, besides Ricky Pooch, of course, being out, our uh, Andres Reyes was actually a late scratch for the Red Bulls in this one. Apparently, uh, they said in the broadcast uh, he was not feeling well, so uh, Noah Ayla replaced him there. And at least early on, that really wa was a big factor because er early on, you know, uh, Noah Ayla, it, it must be tough for a guy that, you know, I know he's probably going to get get his minutes in this game as well, but I don't think he was expecting that he was going to start uh, straight away and it was not surprised that you know he definitely had had some, some nerves early in, in the game and that you know Andres Reyes has, has been huge for this Red Bulls team and to not have him especially er, early on it was a huge impact more so than, than Ricky Pooch in terms of of this Galaxy team because as I said before in the preview you know yes the Galaxy not having Ricky Pooch is, is big but this season they have shown that they they're Actually, just five without Ricky Pooch. They're three, one, and one uh, without Ricky Pooch this, this season overall. Now, that being said, early on in this game, I thought the Red Bulls had more of the possession. And that was ki kind of what we saw in this game. It was kind of the opposite of what I thought it was going to happen. I thought the Galaxy were going to be a team that had more uh, of the possession, considering that's kind of what Greg vanny has been doing the full season. But it seems like he decided that, you know what? We're going to let the Red Bulls have, have more of the possession. We know the Red Bulls are, are a team that struggle in turn. So breaking teams down uh, uh, when they have the, the, the ball. So we'll let them have the ball and see how, how they do. And we'll definitely hit, hit them on the transition because, you know, if there's one thing about ha having the ball is if you give the ball away in bad spot, yeah, you know this Galaxy team is going to feast on the transition. Uh, but that being said, um, in the first five minutes, like I said, the Red Bulls had more of the possession. But then in the ninth minute, on the first shot of the game, it's in the back of the net, and it's Josep Painto. He scored for Brugman and Surreal to make it 1-0 in favor of the, the Galaxy. Though, that being said, you know, even though that that, that one uh, went in at, on, as the first shot of the game, they probably shouldn't have it. Um, I'm pretty sure Carlos Cornell would absolutely want this one, one back uh, when you look at it late, later tonight, and that, you know, as good as Cornell ha has been, uh, the, this uh, playoffs and really kind of one of the biggest reason why they're in in this moment He's got to absolutely save that. I mean that paint so basically hit this right right to to Cornell there I mean you could also question the the defending there uh, from the Red Bulls as well not doing very well uh, de Dealing with it, especially just a simple or uh, uh, through ball pass that cuts a, a couple of the the Red Bulls defense But Carlos Cornell is how how big he's been coming up with massive save like that that was kind of almost like a I wouldn't say as bad of a Steve Clark moment that we, we saw uh, back in the 2015 uh, MLS Cup uh, with him giving the ball away and gifted Columbus the, the lead. But that's one that, yeah, I mean, when it hits straight to, uh, down the middle like that, you would expect any goal, goalkeeper, and especially the, the standard that Carlos Cornell 
sets to save that one. But nevertheless, the Galaxy wouldn't care. They were up one nothing. Jovovic did look for another, but he puts this one over. But then two minutes later, he would not miss. He scored from Delgado to make it two nothing in favor of the Galaxy. Where in the world was the Red Bulls defense? I mean, they were making Dejan Jovovic look like Neil Lionel Messi in this play. Just pretty much he. he he walked down Broadway uncontestedly whatsoever, and you, you kind of had a sense that, oh boy, this could get ugly uh, for for the, the Red Bulls, because the Galaxy, they, they this is what they do. Uh, throughout this bowl season, they've, they've scored uh, 16 playoff goal. I believe they now broke the record for the most goal ever scored in the, the playoffs after scoring the two goals here. But yeah, the Red Bulls defense just absolutely uh, all over the place. They look like rattle, look nothing like, like what we have seen uh, throughout this playoffs. Uh, Edelman then heads it onto his, his own pulse uh, from defending the, the set pieces before Cornell had to deny Peck from close range. And then Delgado just puts it wide after just a WTF turnover there from the Red Bulls. Again, the Red Bulls, it's pretty clear that they did not show up in this game. It's clear, clearly that them going down 2 nothing has just completely rattled them because right now it's been all Galaxy. It looked like this was going to get get, get out, out of hand. This might be, uh, might be one of the most lopsided uh mls cup we have ever ever seen at at this rate as the shots was six nothing for the galaxy however in the 28th minute the red bulls would score and and just like how the galaxy score on their first shot of the game the red bulls would score on their first shot of the game and it's sean nealis the one that gets one back for the red bulls and as i mentioned it was the first shot for the red bulls and it also came all of the set pieces we know this season that one of the biggest problems for the galaxy has been defending set pieces and you know no, it's hard to believe with how bad they've been defending set pieces that they still end, end up uh, on the ma mountaintop so, so far. And again, you know, I think in these last two seasons, it's kind of now started to change the narrative that maybe you don't really need to to to, to have have uh, an incredible defense uh, to do so. Maybe sometimes the offense does, does uh, win win championship. But yeah, this was just kind of almost a, this. Well, the, the Galaxy can see a microcosm of the problem that they have defending set pieces. They just never look comfortable when it comes to that. Not able to clear the ball ball away. And when you don't clear the ball away, yeah, you're basically going to ask it to get score on. And that's exactly uh, what happened. And Sean Nealis took over. And that completely changed the momentum of this game. Because not only the crowd uh, definitely gone, gone silent, except for the 2,000 or, or Red Bulls fan that was chanting, let's go Red Bulls. And by the way, they were very loud in this game. There were times where, you know, I think they were louder than the, the Galaxy supporter. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with the, the broadcast. Maybe uh, the audio was more more favorite toward, toward the Red Bull supporter. But I thought at times the Red Bull supporter were very loud in, 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 in this game and at times more louder than the Galaxy uh, supporter. But... That being said, in the 31st minute, McCarthy would deny Harper from close. And just like that, the momentum was all with the, the, the Red Bulls. They were now looking to equalize. Van Sierra would hit one right to McCarthy on the door doorstep of goal. Uh, we didn't go for a period where not much really happened. And again, the Red Bulls continued to head for the possession. Galaxy was hoping to try and to, to catch them on the break. Jovlich would then hit it right to McCarthy in the second minute of stoppage time. But we do go to halftime. With the Galaxy leading 2-1 over the Red Bulls. Now in the second half, uh, not much really happened. At least in the first nine minutes of the second half. You know, again, this is kind of typical when you usually see see a cup final like this. Usually, the feeling out period is always in the first 15 minutes of both halves. And we're seeing it once again. Though, Painso did curl it wide from, from the top of the arc. Joseph Painso was absolutely dynamic in this game. He definitely came to, to, to play from... from the, the minute one. Uh, there was a shout for a penalty for the Red Bulls not given. Van Zier, uh was then in on goal here, but he was crucially poked away by, by Garces here in the 59th minute. Brookman then flashed it wide from long range. Uh, the possession, again, still favored the Red Bulls. That is something you would not expect coming in to, to this game, but that's exactly what Greg Vanny tried to do. He, he was trying to fr throw a curveball at the Red Bulls, saying that, yeah, we could let you have the, the, the possession, even where, though we're, we're playing at, at home in this game. Uh, and then the post would deny Yamane from close range in the 65th minute. The Galaxy was clearly pushing for a third goal uh, and continued to look for a moment on the transition. Most of these chances has really come from the transition. And it's not surprised because the Rebels had, had to start sending more men forward as the time winds down. They need this equalizer. Uh, we then had some tension as Jovalich and Harper kind of had some choice words with each other. There wasn't really a lot of coming together. And that's kind of the case usually in, in a, a cup fi final where, yeah, you you know, you're not going to get as much tension uh, un unless if, if it's going to be like a blow blowout or or late in the game, there might be some fear, fear frustration between uh, two rivals uh, in a game, 
game. Look, I, I didn't think this was going to be one of those games that's like that. Though, in the 72nd minute, Cornell absolutely robbed uh, Gabriel Peck in the front post. That was more of the Carlos Cornell that we know uh, in the playoffs making that big save. Uh, Frostburg would then flash it wide from close. Uh, it's up for grabs up to this point. But the question is, who can get this next, next goal that could really determine the outcome of of this final uh peck would then miss wide there as the flag went up and i thought gabriel peck might be the most relieved man uh, out out there after the flag went up because he was in on goal he was 1v1 with cornell i think he, he took it a little too casual there and puts that that one wide but yeah he's a little relieved the fact that, that the flag went up and looking at the replay i mean it's very close it, it is i i think even uh if that one went in um you know with the flag cup coming up I don't think that was going to be overturned. I didn't think that there was enough in terms of it. But still, you know, in the end, it, did, it didn't go into the back end. And, and again, Gabriel Peck, probably the most relieved man out there. Because if that was actually on site uh, there, that would, would be a moment that not only Gabriel Peck would want to look back, but maybe a moment the Galaxy might look back if they don't put this game away. Uh, Royce then hits it right to Cornell in the 76th minute. There was question what, whether or not if Marco Royce was fit enough to be in this game. Apparently, uh... Greg Vanny thinks he is, as he subbed him on, and he was the first player to come on into this game. Uh, Ely then heads it wide from close. The shots were 12-9 for the Galaxy. Again, it was a very entertaining game, and this is not a big surprise, because it's not a Galaxy game. It, there, there, There's not a lot, a lot of chances. I mean, we've seen some cup finals but before where it can be a very tense, cagey affair. Not this one. Uh, the, you know in a Galaxy game, you're not never going to get like a game that is very, very ten, tense and very, very cagey, unless if the opposition decided to to kind of sit back just like what we saw in the western conference final between the, them and the sounders uh harper then hits it right to mccarthy in the 85th minute uh that also came all of a set pieces and again the galaxy continue to look uncomfortable when it comes to defending it uh there was a scramble in the galaxy box which ended with burke shot that was blocked the galaxy was clearly hang on the red bulls were, were putting everyone on four four to try to send this to extra time and then uh we had a bit of a premature celebration uh the galaxy player and bench were celebrating thinking that they won MLS Cup when uh indeed in in fact the the offside flag actually came up and the whistle was actually for an offside. Now the good news is in the end that didn't didn't come back to to bite the the Galaxy because we've seen so many uh, times before in in sports where when you do, do the premature celebration, yeah, things are going to come back to haunt you. Good news for the Galaxy, it didn't haunt haunt them because in the end they win their record six MLS Cup with a 2-1 win over the New York Red Bulls. The shots in this one, dead even at 13 shots. Seven shots on Goku with the five that the Red Bulls had. One shot off target with the four that the Galaxy had. One shot that was blocked with the five that the Red Bulls had. And possession-wise, again, you know, you would not expect that the Red Bulls would have more of the possession compared to the Galaxy. You know, throughout the season, I don't recall uh, uh, one time when the Galaxy are being outpossessed when they're play playing at, at home like they did in this game. But in the end, I mean, the Galaxy... I mean, to, to their credit, they jumped out to a 2-0 lead. Anytime when you jumped out to, to a quick lead and you were able to score a couple of goals in, in a playoff match, and especially at a cup file, that you, you're you going to have a good chance in terms of so winning it. And, you know, for the Red Bulls, even though they, they definitely uh, show some tenacity to fight back in this one, again, just one, you can't go down 2-0 uh, in an MLS Cup final. Like, when you go down 2-0 in an MLS Cup final, more times or, or not, you're, you're not going to come back uh, from this reserve, and then secondly, again, these missed chances that they 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 had, uh, it's been a problem for this team in the second half of the season. Less of a problem in the playoffs if you don't uh, uh, include the first game that they had against Columbus uh, that they actually won. But also, they it, it's it's a I I still think it, it it's considered a successful season uh, for for the Red Bulls. I mean, I know Red Bulls fan will be very frustrated that it feels like it's 2008 all over again, having an unexpected season only to fall short once again, which has been kind of what, what sums up this team, but this team has gone, gone deeper than anybody a, a expected them. Like if you would have told any Red Bulls fan, uh, heading into the playoffs, we're in the beginning of the season that this team would, would reach MLS cup 2024. Uh, nobody would have, uh, would have believed you. Like Red Bulls fan would think, think that that's, that's, uh, that's like a, a dream that, that they, they would have that they can get back to this stage. But, you know, unfortunately, they once again uh, fall, fall short. And once again, LA reigns supreme, just like what we saw in the World World, World Series. You know, an LA team beating a New York your team in, in a, a final. And, you know, for the ga Galaxy, they, they fought for, for really deserve to, to win this. I mean, we knew that coming into to this uh, MLS Cup, they were one of the, the, the favorites coming out of the West. I think it was between them and the LA team. And really, 
Uh, after that that Western Conference final where they were able to beat beat Seattle, you just kind of had a sense that you know. I know, obviously, you know, in a cup final like this, anything can happen. But you know, you just kind of had a sense the Galaxy were, were were destined to win this, and that's exactly what they they did. So yeah, congratulations in terms of them winning their sixth MLS Cup and once again getting themselves back into to the, the the mountain of MLS. And as I I also said said before, I mean, I know some people might li not like it, but I think MLS is in a better place when the Galaxy are actually competitive, and especially uh, with them be, be, being back at the top of, of the mountain. They, they are considered to be one of, of, if not the most successful franchise in, in league history. And, you know, it's been it's been a long 10 years and it, for, for Galaxy fans to suffer, but it must feel good for them to, to now finally back being in the mount, mountain top and, again, raising their sixth MOS Cup, a record sixth uh, MOS Cup as a result of that, too. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you like, smash the subscribe button. As always, let me know in the comments below what do you think of this MOS Cup. And like I said, just like that, the 2024 MOS season and the, the 28th MOS season is now in the books, which means that now we're going to start doing uh, off-season stuff. Obviously, I'm going to continue to do my moving forward series. I kind of stopped doing it uh, during the playoffs because I didn't have time to do so. But most importantly, uh, I'll definitely do an emotion in index, looking at every team and how they feel of their season feel whether they feel like they, they meet expectation or they definitely did not meet expectation or over uh met met their their expectation as some team of course do and then of course we start doing the moving forward series um before you know it we're gonna have the expansion draft that is gonna happen we're gonna have a lot of transfer that is happening in fact leading to this week we already are seeing some transfer that is happening so i'm gonna be going back to doing two news of the week episode like i always do in the off season but either way it's gonna be interesting Interesting to see see uh, how this off season is for every single single team, and it's been fun to basically uh, look at what we saw this year. Hopefully, in twenty twenty five, and in a couple uh, of months when the season kicks off again, we're gonna have another fun fun season. Especially this playoffs too. I, I think this has been considered to be one of my my most fun, and maybe the most fun playoffs I've I, I've done ever since I come through this league uh, for the past couple. Uh, uh, of years because of all the upset that that is happening but yeah either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time